Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you for the response. That's great. So, hmm, let's wait another half minute while we look at uh, the syllabus. So according to the syllabus, we are now in week 15. So last week, we mainly focused on sensors, especially motion sensors. So this is now week 15, we are going to talk about actuators, okay? The reading materials will be in the chapter seven. So chapter seven. Chapter seven. And next week, we probably only spend half of the week uh, talking about all these uh, advanced topics. Um, then we'll probably spend some time talking about the final exam. Uh, but today, let's focus on, let's focus on actuators, okay, actuators. Okay, ready? Let me see. Oh, we got 13 people. It's uh, less than last time. So something is not right. 14 people. <clears throat> but I assume that uh, if you do not attend the lecture, you are going to watch the recorded lecture. Okay, so we give you that uh, flexibility. So today we are going to talk about DC motors. Okay, DC motors. And in mechatronics, this is the very fundamental for the mechatronics. And today is uh, week 15 and uh, lecture A. Okay, lecture A. So we are going to go through what's the elementary DC machine. Then talking about uh, some of the winding uh, relative to the motion. Especially we want to talk about voltage torque equation. This is called external relationship. External relationship. Then we are going to talk about uh, four types of uh, DC motor uh, excitation method, like separate winding excitation, shunt connected, series connected, and compound connected. And we are going to talk, another one is um, uh, talking about permanent magnet DC motor. We're going to go through all the block diagrams uh, that is useful for the modeling or control. Okay. The modeling is basically physical modeling, okay? Physical modeling for control purpose. Okay. Then we have some practice issues regarding how to select the gear and what's the gear ratio and how to choose the motor and uh, when you select the motor, what are the factors? So we probably cannot finish all the slides on the DC motors, but uh, majority, I hope everybody after this week, you will know the DC motors, you have two types, okay? One is called uh, brushed. Brushed. Another one is called brushless, okay? So this week, we basically will cover these two. But if you say you want to more actuators, and uh, we have a, a actuator homework, so I hope you are going to focus on different types of uh, actuators, okay? Um, to share with the class. Okay, let's move on. So first of all, we talk about brushed DJ motor. That means it has a brush. Okay, uh, but it is widely used in the past. Uh, today we use more and more uh, brushless motors, okay? Uh, I want to give you a first, uh, probably it's a shocking uh, fact that uh, when you say brushless, 
coincide with this DC model? It is actually an AC model, okay? <laughs> it is actually an AC model. So please uh, bear this one in mind from the beginning. Okay, brushless DC model is, is actually an AC model, okay? However, its external characteristics looks like a brushed DC model. Therefore, we still call it DC model, okay? That's the reason. Uh, so we're mainly for mechatronics engineer, you should know those model uh, principles, okay? And we use a simplified method for analysis. Uh, so we are not going to treat this commutation uh, in detail, but we should know the principle. Okay? So all in all, everything is um, try to turn mechanical energy into electrical energy. This is generated. From electrical energy goes to mechanical motion, that's the motor. Okay? This is generated. Generate electricity. <clears throat> so I think it's a good idea to first talk about the two pole, two pole DC machine. Okay. Okay. okay I have 19 students. I'm happy. So the two pole it has uh, three things. Okay. Two pole elementary machine has two things. Uh, three things. <clears throat> one is um, field winding on stator and uh, armature coil winding on the rotor or armature. So we are using this armature uh, rotor versus stator. So we're going to see the picture soon. Then there's another one is called commuter, commutator, commutator. So let's see a picture. Do we have a picture? Yeah, we have a picture here. Yeah, this is the picture. So, <clears throat> so I have two parts. One is a stator part, one is a rotor part. So everything inside this circle, this thing is going to move. And this thing stator here is not going to move. Okay? This is not going to move, standing there. And here we have salient. So this is called salient. Salient. So I have a pair of poles here, okay, a pair of poles. Around the pole, I have winding put there. So the winding going inside the paper or inside the screen is, think about the uh, arrow, okay? Uh, no, W, arrow. So uh, this is arrow head. This is arrow tail. You have arrow going inside and this is the uh, arrow going outside, so you have dot is going outside. So that shows how the current is going in on throughout this side. So you have F1 is going in, F1 prime is going uh, outside, so in and out, okay, in and out. The same thing you have here, so there are two pairs of uh, windings, okay, winding. And then you, so this is for the winding. The reason you have a winding, uh, the reason you have a winding, okay, the field winding is to generate a field. What field? Magnetic field, right? So then you have a magnetic field inside here. And of course, uh, here is, a, is actually here is called air gap, okay, air gap. So you have to have the air gap you can turn, right? Uh, in reality, this gap is very small, okay? Uh, so while you, this one turns, uh, okay? Or while you give this uh, electricity in, inside here, you are going to uh, make mechanical motion, mechanical motion. On this mechanical motion, you have two halves. So this is the insulator, this is the insulator. So these are copper segment. Okay, copper segment. This is also copper segment. Okay, segment. But these two halves are isolated. Okay, it's insulated. Okay. So I think F1, F1 prime, F2, F2 prime, F stands 
here, okay? Right here. But on this um, rotor, you also have winding. So you can see this is arrow out, this is the wire here. So you have a so you have you have a winding go in, winding go out. So you have a like a rectangular winding. So the rectangular will turn. Okay, so it turn. So you apply the current there. So the A, the A and A prime, okay. A is this way. A prime is stuff coming out of the paper. And the A actually is basically it's called amateur coil. Amateur coil. A is amateur coil. Or the rotor coil. Of course, you have resistance uh, RA, you have resistance RF, remember, F stands field. Okay. So when you apply the voltage VA in here, okay, VA in here, you are going to induce the motion. But this is just a three, uh, just a, uh, the, uh, the section uh, illustration. Um, but in reality, you should say you have this uh, cylindric form, okay? Um, so that's uh, for the schematic. But um, <clears throat> in reality, you should say here, this is called air gap. Is as I said in here, but in principle, you can say this VF is an uh, excitation uh, voltage. The IF is the excitation current. So you have a F, F1 to F1 prime, F1 prime connect to F2, F2, F2 prime. So you have this uh, excitation circuit. To produce uh, everything here is a magnetic field, okay? So inside a magnetic field, you have an armature. So this is a, a rotor, okay? rotor. Okay. Then when you apply the voltage here, so you have an armature current uh, going through here. So then this one will start to move. And you can connect your load in here. So your motor, you, you put a load, you turn, you just uh, from the shaft, you, you get uh, a load. So that's a basic elementary two-pro uh, DC machine. So, so so there is a, you can see there's a, uh, this is a voltage, the field winding. So of course you have a, a, the lambda F here is link flux. Okay, flux linkage. Flux linkage is related to your field uh, exciting current. And there's something very important, it's called FA coupling. So it's called mutual, have you heard about mutual inductance? Mutual inductance, okay. So you have two coils, you have another coil in here. So there are some gap in between here, but so this coil will generate a magnetic field affect this one. So this is called mutual inductance, mutual inductance. This is actually called self-inductance, okay? Self-inductance. Here, this is our mutual inductance, uh, okay? And this is our, the current from this side, AA prime, okay? Remember AA prime is this, from here, A, A prime. So you have coil, so. So that is a, a, a flux linkage, and uh, the change of flux linkage is uh, your your uh, it's like LDIDT. Remember, we learned that LDIDT is V for uh, inductors. Okay, inductor. So this is inductor inductance or self inductance, and uh, so the same thing is true for uh, amateur. What it applies is the current here. 
we have already said the resistance is just from the coil. Okay. So then you have um, changes in the uh, flex linkage. And again, the flex linkage is, uh, this is called self induction. Because you have a coil, you, you have a coil, you will have uh, inductance and resistance. So inductance, resistance, okay? And there's another one called LAF. Uh, it's called mutual inductance, okay? Mutual inductance. So that's because of that coupling. So they can convert you know, <clears throat> uh, mechanical energy to electrical energy or electrical energy to mechanical energy. So, so yeah, three hours. Um, <clears throat> so the commutation is uh, the rotor will change then the action of the commutator is to switch the stationary terminal from one terminal to another basically it's the reverse side reverse side so the switch between r is zero pi two pi three pi four pi and so on and so forth it's a half half circle remember Remember, you have half half here. Okay. So there's a commutator. Okay. Uh, this is called first order approximation, saying that um, this is a mutual inductance, they are the same. Okay. There's a constant between the angle you uh, move. Okay. Angle you move. Um, let me see if I have a better picture, you can see. Yeah, that's uh, another picture. Let me see if I have another. I think I have a better picture in here so you can view uh, 3D-ish, okay? Uh, can you see this one? So you, you treat this side as your, uh, a stator, okay? Uh, you have winding, so you have A and F. But now you're looking at here, looking at here, okay? So you apply this one, so you have a, a commutator uh, in here, okay? Commutator in here. So when you turn, this guy turns, the theta is the angle, he turns. Um, you have different uh, way of uh, cutting the magnetic field, right? So, so this is also show you this direction. And uh, this is the uh, load coupled with the shaft. So inside all this uh, rotor and outside is stator, okay? Um, okay, so this guy is called the brush, <laughs> the brush. And of course we have ball bearings here. Mm. So let me, so this is uh, for permanent magnet. I see some similarity in here. Let us come back to this one. Um, so that's why you have uh, this cosine theta r. r is a uh, uh, rotational angle, relative angle, okay? So the commutator I told this is, you can, you can just imagine a picture. Um, So the the induced the induced voltage is a minimum because once you pass through the, uh, the the brush pass through it may happen to have very short term of uh, short circuit. So so we can we should minimize that kind of uh, touching both sides because shock. All right. So so that's why uh, we have to make that um, small. Okay. The brush is small. Okay. So the waveform of the voltage induced uh, in the open circuit amateur a coil for a constant speed operation. Uh, you have a constant field winding. Okay. So in that case, this the current is uh, in the amateur is zero while the excitation current is constant. 
So you don't have a load, then you don't have a, a current, okay? So after we put this uh, mutual inductance into that, okay, we are getting something like uh, the amateur, amateur voltage is proportional to, so because of this is DCFR DT here, and I have sine theta, so this DCFR DT is my omega, okay? You have still sine theta in here, okay? So you are going to see, um, because of, it should be look like this, but because of the, because of the, the so this, this v, 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 A, A prime should look like this, sinusoid, okay? So then, but because of the commutator, it will flip something like this, flip like this. I have a picture here. So you actually, the, the, the amateur uh, voltage will show up like this. You may say, so we're talking about now, uh, talking about from uh, mechanical motion to electricity. So the VAA is my electricity I'm producing. But this doesn't look like a DC, right? Doesn't look like DC, it's not DC, okay? Okay, so if, uh, if you do Fourier series expansion, so you are seeing that uh, the DC component in here is roughly here, like average. Uh, here. There are some other, uh, uh, other uh, harmonics um, on top of this DC. So this is a roughly DC, okay, roughly DC. But how they reverse this one is because of this uh, uh, commutation, uh, commutation. But uh, if without this commutation, you are going to have a, a, just a sinusoid, right? <laughs> just sinusoid. So, but we don't feel we like this is DC. So it's not really DC, it's very rough DC. So what we want to do is to, what if I add uh, another pair of poles? Okay? Uh, so here I'm uh, talking about uh, multipoles, okay? So I have a multiple uh, winding, okay? Multiple windings. Uh, even if I have only one pole, pair of poles, okay? I have uh, uh, many of this uh, stator windings, uh, uh, so amateur winding, okay? So amateur winding. So I, I, I arrange them in such a way that they have like, um, in this case, um, 60 degree apart, okay? 60 degree apart. So how many of these? They have one, two, three, okay? One, two, three, okay. So you can arrange in such a way that, uh, then in the end, the VA, uh, for open circuit, meaning I don't have any uh, load on, on this, so I have no load, okay? But it's, mo it's moving, this, this, this voltage is moving, so they will generate uh, electricity. So this one looks like a DC, right? More like a DC, okay? So we so have a lot of parallel amateur windings, okay? Winding. So this is a very good news, okay? So I want to challenge you that, uh, do you believe there's a 100% DC, cur uh, cur uh, DC um, voltage? The answer is no, no. There is always some ripple content, okay? This is called a ripple, okay? Ripple content in a DC. It is just very small, it's just very, very small, okay? But sometimes people say, oh, I put a, uh, I put a capacitor uh, so that uh, all the high frequency will be gone and what's kept is the DC. That's another way. Say for example, give you an example. So is this not very good? If you cascade here with a, with a capacitor, okay, then this overall will become like this. So it will become, so because of the capacitor, it will, 
you will you will come something like this. You can make it like uh, not going down and do the, the charge like that. Okay. So that's how uh, things go in for all the DC uh, power supply. They need this capacitor to filter out this uh, high frequency ripples. But um, it's still there. There isn't a 100% DC. So that's uh, idealized DC machine with uniform distributed rotor winding. So it's possible that uh, the winding can be like arranged just, just like a one after another, just like a full circle. So in this case, then the DC, uh, this, this ripple is even smaller, right? Even smaller. So, which is true in many of the DC motors. So the rotor winding is one after another around this, okay? You know, um, so let me remind you one more time about this picture. <laughs> let me let me uh, uh, control plus plus plus. Uh, so do you see this is a this is a rotor, right? This is a rotor. Do you see the windings, 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 windings? They just just windings one after another, just like uh, distributed evenly. Okay, okay, there are just so many of these. Because of that, because of that, <coughs> because of that. <coughs> the ripple here is almost negligible, okay, negligible. All right, so this is called a uniformly distributed rotor winding. Or which in practice many of the diesel motors are constructed in that way. Okay. So there are many different uh, innovative ways to do a commutation, and sometimes they introduce uh, multiple poles. Okay, multiple poles. So, and there are many different ways to connect the windings. So I'm not going to go through that. So that's it. Okay, I think this is better uh, for you to take a look. So you have a you have stator, you have you have a rotor. So basically, you you rotate it this way. Um. So this uh, air gap size is, is exaggerated, meaning the air gap is actually very small. Okay. So we assume in the uh, the windings, you have how many turns on the stator? N turns. Then uh, winding two, you have uh, N turns. So N two turns. And uh, we assume that all the turns are just lumped in one position. That um, uh, we are trying to. So we have seen this already, right? So for a stator, for the rotor. So then uh, we have a. Uh, we have a mutual inductance, okay, okay. Let's assume everything is linear. Then uh, self-inductance, okay, self-inductance is proportional to uh, the number of turns, okay, number of the turns. Rt2 is also a um, number of turns, okay. So <clears throat> this is due to the magnetic path of uh, phi M1 and phi M2 about flex linkage. Um, don't worry about this detail, but you have seen this before. This is a uh, flex linkage. This you have seen this. And how to compute self induction. So you have seen this as well. Um, so then we did this system start a term, we have uh, theta r is uh, angular displacement, theta omega r is angular velocity. So this type of uh, derivation will lead you to, so we have seen this before, lead you to um, v1, v2 here, and you have uh, omega is a d, so you have sine 
the towers that are in here. You are still having all these things, okay? So then in the end, you have a, a so excitation vortices here, is here. So you have lambda, you can put it here. So then you have, a, a, totally you have a, you lump everything together here. You lump everything here together. Remember, you have I one square, I two square. And this is, okay. So together, so don't worry about this equation. Don't worry about this equation for each of the coil. So you can lump everything into this term. I one times I two is mutual inductance. And here you have L S R, and here you have angle here. So that's your total uh, magnetic. Term energy talk okay talk okay so um let's try to uh check uh i1 and i2 they have a relative motion relative motion so uh, electromagnetic torque and the angular displacement you have constant winding current so suppose you have a ns ns okay once you once you change position, you will be dragged to the next position, right? Dragged to the next position. So that's why you have a stable means they are trapped together. Unstable means you expel, okay? So oh, as you turn, okay? As you turn, next turn, next turn, next turn, next turn, okay? So So you can forget uh, all the details within the magnetic field and also the, how they cut the magnetic field. Uh, if we just look uh, at, uh, this is called external characteristic. Characteristic. Like uh, I give you a voltage and uh, you are going to turn and you also can generate torque, okay? You can generate torque. So, and um, that's uh, starting from here, okay? So we have a excitation current, we have amateur current, we have VAVF, we have seen this, and B is DDT, okay? This is due to the uh, flux linkage, okay? Flux linkage is due to uh, the inductance, okay? This is the mutual inductance in amateur, mutual inductance in a, a field excitation, and here we have uh, the mutual inductance, okay? So we have seen these pictures, okay? So this is called self-inductance. Self-inductance for the amateur, motor speed, and the mutual inductance. <clears throat> By writing this way, so we again, we can check, this is my air gas. So this is called uh, a permanent circuit for a DC motor. So you have field generation side, you have amateur side, okay? Amateur side. But remember, this could link to a load. Okay, I'll go back to this thing. Just let's say we don't put any load, just say it's called uh, load free. Just let it turn, okay? If I apply the voltage, it will start to turn without, uh, but um, like, uh, when I put a load, if the load is too heavy, so the torque will be enough. So what is that torque we can generate? So let's do it. So we have seen from this equation, then we can move to this uh, equivalent circuit. So this is the uh, field excitation side, and this is um, the rotor uh, armature coil. So with the resistance and mutual inductance. This is, sorry, self-inductance. This is a mutual inductance. There's an omega here, this IF is due to this IF, okay? Omega R is, is the speed, okay? This is this term, okay, this term, this term. So with that, we have a field and amateur voltage equation. This is called voltage equation, okay? Voltage equation, but how we can, get this mutual inductance, mutual inductance, 
Um, uh, so you probably, some of you had experience when you buy a DC motor or even brushless DC motor or this, oh, what is your KV? What is your KV? So here is the answer. What's the physical meaning of KV? Suppose your uh, fuel excitation current is constant. You have a uh, mutual inductance. This multiplied together is called KV, okay, KV. So go back to here. So which is KV? This one is the KV. Okay. Okay, there. So, <clears throat> so this is also called a constant KV. Okay, voltage constant. Uh, voltage constant. Okay. okay. Of course, KV the bigger, the better, and also more expensive. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> This one, I need to start to tell you that because you have a motor, you have you put a to, uh, load. So uh, T sub L, L stands for load, T stands for torque. So then uh, you have, can generate a T sub M and you can counteract on that. So this is the motion for the, uh, the shaft motion. Okay, omega M. So that's uh, connected to this coupling through this shaft, okay? But you actually you are you are, you are getting a, another a load. The load itself has a moment of inertia, MOI, in here. Okay. So this torque drives this. This is a turning. Okay. This is turning. So you have a damping here because of the air gap or something. Because of this one is a B. Uh, B is actually a, a constant. So it's like a viscous. Uh, damping, so it's like um, we have a friction is proportional to the friction is proportional to how fast you move, okay? Or omega in here. So then we have k in here, k friction. So this is due to uh, The, the friction, you know the friction? You know, you, you have a, uh, the friction, doing the friction, so you have a speed. The friction uh, is something like this. When your speed is large enough, it's moving, after you have already been moving, okay? Um, so it, the, this rate is called B. It's called B or BM, okay? Doesn't matter. But B, I guess the original idea probably is from bearing, uh, ball bearing, I'm guessing. Um, because usually you have a shaft and then you move and this shaft has a ball bearing. Then this ball bearing, you put in a, a lubricant and then you still create some of this. Uh, so that kind of a friction is called a viscous friction. But remember, uh, in reality, if you are not moving, you also have a static friction. So this is called Coulomb friction. This Coulomb friction will, will when you slowly motion, then eventually do something like this. So that's a friction to velocity. So in here, this is called Coulomb friction, okay? Coulomb. Yeah. Coulomb friction. So this 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 side is actually has a name. It's called strific friction. Okay, strific friction. That depends on the material and the surface. Okay. Okay, we don't want to say that too much, and I want to tell you that um, this is a, this is the equation for this is due to the motor electromagnetic torque, the okay, EM torque. Generated for um, counteract with the load torque. This is the frictional torque, and this is the Newton's second law, right? So this is a, a omega. I guess a theta double dot. Okay. Okay. So this is friction, viscous friction, external load. It's acceleration. Okay, acceleration. The angular acceleration, this is the moment of inertia, right? So then this one, 
this one is actually TE actually is proportional to, okay, uh, proportional to my amateur current and my KV, okay. When you buy a DC motor, you must answer the question, what KV you want, okay. All right, so, so everything started to connect. So while the IA and KV is uh, linked in here, okay, linked in here. So this whole thing adding together in this, in this one here is called EMF. Okay, called back EMF. What is the EMF? E stands for electromagnetic. What is F? Okay, it's called back EMF. Back EMF. So if I put this one in the final exam, I just ask you to write down what is EMF. Can you tell me? You should. But for those who didn't attend today's lecture, no, good luck, okay? As soon as you watch it, okay? So, we're here, okay? We have a equivalent circuit, you have a electromagnetic coupling uh, to the load, this is my load, B is my load, A is my uh, motor system, I have a stator field uh, excitation circuit, and here, when I, when I apply this one, I, I know that I have a uh, back EMF. Don't forget that term, okay? But there's a term to counteract on that. <coughs> that back EMF is actually KV and omega A. Okay, uh, actually here is omega M, okay? Okay, so let's see basic types of, uh, so we should write, uh, the, this is called physics-based modeling, okay? Physics-based modeling. Uh, we're going to develop a transfer function around the whole thing. So, so eventually I know that my, the, I, I just look at the block diagram and say, oh, I gave you a VA, okay? I gave you a VA as, a, as an input signal. What you gave me is uh, omega M, okay? And what, What's inside here? Okay. What's inside here? What's the transfer function there? Okay. We are going to go through that. However, I want you to fully understand the physical modeling principle in here. The key concept here is um, this kind of air gap, air gap coupling. And what coupling is a uh, is a uh, what link plug. The magnetic <coughs> is called magnetic link flux. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, so, what are the uh, types of uh, DC brushed? Okay. <laughs> brushed. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, brushed DC current, uh, DC uh, machines. So that depends on how the uh, field and amateur windings are they connected? Okay, connected. So what we have seen so far is what we call separate winding excitation. Okay, uh, it includes a permanent magnet. Okay, so I hope this is the fundamental one. But in reality, there are many other ways. So three other ways: shunt, connect the series, and a compound. So let's quickly take a look. Okay, each of this, um, they have a different equivalent circuit. And, uh, so they have different operational external characteristics. Okay, characteristics. characteristics. So separate excitation, we have seen this already. So we have seen this. This is uh, again, this is BMS, okay. So you need to use this guy minus this guy and you can have this IA. Okay, 
And this IA is also linked to how fast you turn. So then the how fast you turn is depending on your load in here, or TL, okay? Okay, put on the shaft, okay. So you can see it's um, interconnected. We're going to see that uh, later, okay? So we have seen this already. We don't want to talk too much. And then here we know this is uh, amateur, and this uh, actually has a name called KV, right? And this is a Newton's second law, okay? Newton's second law. Uh, they assume this guy is zero, okay? And in steady state, this guy, so BM is small, meaning yeah, your lubricant is so good, so this is so small, okay? So we want to check uh, the steady state. Basically, your load has to balance your electromagnetic guitar, okay? So this is called steady state characteristics, okay? Uh, of course, I told you um, PMDC, PMDC motor is um, the same idea here, okay? So this one is usually replaced with a constant called KV. So, so when you talk about the DC motor, it's, oh, what is your KV of the value? They usually give you a value. So you can measure this KV, but it's usually given in the spec sheet, okay? So most of the small handhold is uh, not more than one horsepower called fractional horsepower DC motor. We have one in our meta lab, okay? We have this one here. Uh, it's to do a speed control, controlling amplitude of applied amateur voltage, okay? Those small fractional horsepower. Uh, so HP stands for horsepower. So do you guys have an idea and when you drive your car, how many horses are pulling you? Do you have an idea what's the, what's the horsepower? type in the chat box, give me a number. How many horses you will be using uh, equivalent to the uh, horsepower for your car? Do you have an idea? Type a number for me. Can you hear? 10? That's wrong. 100 is close. 300 is a minivan, okay? <laughs> My, I have a vehicle, it's 300 something uh, horsepower. I feel surprised. Every time when I drive, I say, oh, 300 horses pulling me uh, from it. Okay, so 150-ish is your usual um, sedan car, but uh, for minivan, it's um, about 330 horses. Uh, you can quickly do and check how many horses. But in many of the mechatronics uh, applications, your motor's power is less than one horse, okay? Power. <laughs> so that's why they use the, the term fractional horsepower. Uh, when you build something to check, so that is called dynamometer. It's called dynamometer check the motor's characteristics. So this is a separate uh, excited winding. So now this one you are seeing is different. So you can see you only have one power supply relay here. And this one will also serve as a um, field excitation. So VA is VF, okay? So VA is VF. So this is called shunt connected DC machines. And we can derive these characteristics. And um, so, because everything is known, and so you can find the right, um, the TE is uh, uh, giving like this, remember? And uh, this is my TV, right? So that's my talk. And if you put every equation in there, it's uh, proportional to VA, mm -hmm. and here's omega R. Omega R. So <clears throat> what does that mean? What does that mean? That means when well, omega is zero, okay? Okay, so the, the VA will give a very large torque to prove it. So the, the advantages of yours, okay? So, so 
this uh, uh, this uh, the machine with a constant source uh, voltage. So your starting voltage here, the starting torque is pretty high. Okay, pretty high. So you use omega r as a axis, x axis. Then you check the torque generated. So this is a torque speed relationship. Okay. So <clears throat> shunt connected DC motors. If you have a constant voltage source, so when omega r is zero, that's called stall. Okay. So Okay, so the IA, when it is stored, omega is zero, so only by the amateur resistance, okay? So in the case of a small prominent magnet motor, the amateur resistance is large, a starting amateur current, okay, uh, is generally um, not damaging, but uh, for large horsepower, the shunt excitation circuit, so when you starting from omega r is zero, then <clears throat> it may happen you are going to kill. Or, uh, the i is too big, so then uh, the, the the heat is too big in the you know, in the conductor. Then <clears throat> it will get burned. Okay, burn. Very high amateur current. Okay. It could um, damage the, the overall circuit. So therefore, you usually need a startup helper, startup uh, resistance resistor to put it in when it is start. You cascade a, a larger resistor so that the amateur current is not that big. Okay. So to prevent a very high starting current. From the stall, okay, from the stall, the resistance may be inserted into the amateur. So this is called starting resistor, okay? Another idea is that if your talk, okay, load talk is big, and uh, then you got stuck, okay? <laughs> okay, stuck. You got stuck, omega is zero, then your current is very big. So you got stuck your um, amateur's current will be really big. They will produce lots of heat until to a point you get burned, okay? So it's also dangerous to get stall. Stall is going to be dangerous for this. So, but for some small amateur resistance, uh, for the steep torque, uh, it's, it's good. Um, so the speed of the shunt machine does not change a lot when you load the torque is varied from zero to rated. So the torque is kind of like like more or less constant torque. This is great if the torque is not going to drop at usually my my load is big. Okay, it's hard to pull. Uh, then my speed will drop. Okay. Okay. But that's for usual case, uh, separated uh, excited circuit. But for this shunt, the the the, the torque <clears throat> is more or less constant. So in other words, the omega r is kind of like constant. This is nice actually. So, okay, so here we have series connected DC motors. So you have. Uh, again, you have one uh, amateur, so <laughs> you going through here and come back to here. They are cascaded; they are kind of series connected. Okay, so you can also um, do some derivations. I'm not going to go through very quickly, but um, this is the externally uh, applied voltage. Uh, okay, so. <clears throat> So what's the characteristic is you have a very high store torque. So meaning the omega r is zero, the torque is very high. It's proportional to the square of the amateur current for a linear magnetic system. 
So that's why you have something very heavy you want to prove, uh, then you can use that. Think about your car. You have a uh, you have third. Uh, you, you do a different uh, change, different gear. Okay, uh, it's similar to here. If you want to climb a deep, uh, steep uh, uh, slope, then you put the low gear, right? So something similar to here. You need a very large, large gear. Okay, uh, sorry, you need a large starting torque. Okay, but on the other hand, you cannot put too much because the magnetic system will saturate, okay? Remember the saturation of uh, the current is uh, a magnetic flux, so you have something like this. So this is a hysteresis type, and then you've got it saturated here, okay? Right, <laughs> not very nice, but it's exactly like this. Uh, <clears throat> if your rotor speed is already very high, then torque will decrease very rapidly, okay? So that's, oh, okay, sorry. Uh, the load torque is, uh, load torque is small. The series motor accelerated to a speed large enough to cause the damage to the machine. So this is the dangerous part, okay? So you cannot use, uh, cannot be empty. So if you don't have a load, okay, don't have a load, then your whole system will be in trouble, okay, because that uh, will get accelerated at a very large speed, okay. So why we need a series? Then we usually need a large, high starting torque. Uh, in, in a normal operation, we still want reasonable uh, load torque. If the low torque goes to zero, then your I will go to very big. Uh, omega R will go to very big. Okay. And that will cause um, damage and accident. So again, you can appreciate what's this. This is a V total add in. So um, you have uh, part of the excitation is um, in series. Part of this is in parallel, so it's called compound. Again, you can derive uh, different uh, relationship in here, and uh, you get what is an RA or VQ relationship. You can derive TT, uh, magnetic torque, and it's quite complicated, right? So, so we are not going to do the example testing here. We are going to use Laplace transformation to check whether we can get a transfer function from that. So let's use the, sh the shunt connected DC motor, okay? So it's called time domain block diagram and state equations, okay? So let's talk about permanent magnet DC, okay? And remember this D operator is uh, this an operator DDT. Okay. To replace DT with D, who who invented this? Do you guys know? TV side first used this before Laplace invented Laplace transform. I believe Laplace gets the inspiration from heavy side. So that's why we do this unit step function is called heavy side function, okay? To respect the heavy. So these are differentiation and about this I. So with this as a starting point. So this is our uh, shaft connected. Um, do you know what is the T? Okay. We use the KV. Okay. So. Uh, all right. So we can rearrange. Okay, rearrange writing uh, in a, the component form. So T minus TL, the proportion to that. So let's, uh, assuming this time constant, tau F, tau A, A is amateur F is zero. So then we can write IF in terms of the D in here, D in here, and omega 
uh, right in the being here. Okay, so let's do the whole paragraph. So basically, I have a V of F go through this uh, excitation circuit. So then I have uh, this mutual inductance, okay, mutual inductance. So then I come over here, and this one multiply the Ia, okay, this is Ia, this is I F. Multiply together, okay, the I F the R A F, okay, so. Actually, we actually here actually we, we call it K, okay. Then you get the T, it's the electromagnetic uh, magnetic uh, torque, okay. Then you have a load torque, okay. This is a load torque minus going through Newton's second law, you get omega, omega times uh, here. Uh, this area here. Um, so this is again is like KV, okay? So you produce uh, BMF. Again, I, I spell for you back electromagnetic force, okay? Actually, the M actually is not magnetic, it's called motive. This E stands for electromagnetic motive force. Okay, sorry. Um, back electromagnetic motive force, back EMF. Okay, because of this back EMF, so you drive this is uh, your amateur circuit. They you put together. So, <laughs> is this correct? So, uh, maybe you need to recall what going on here, so you have a resistance, so you have a VF, so you have, you have an armature in here, you have a, you have a so this is a VA, so you have here, but this motor has a plus or minus, Plus or minus. So this is a BMF. This BMF is KV omega, KV omega. Oh, okay, and this one will be a connective load. Um, the load has um, uh, omega. Here we use omega r. So we have omega r dot times j is uh, B omega r. Uh, j uh, j is my moment of inertia. Um, plus my TL, my load. Okay, okay. So, so the BM is here, J is here. Okay. So this picture is a time domain block diagram, and this is the physical, physics motivated model of a DC motor. And this is um, separately excited. So the VF and the VA are different. This is separately excited. But here we are talking about shunt connected. What does that mean? That means, that means this one should be the same. Okay, should be the same. VF and VA, you should put a, a curve in here. Okay. So for a system, what I care. So for a system, you usually care what's in, what's out, right? What's in, right? VA, what's out? Omega R, right? Is that right? Must be. Okay. So with that, you can write uh, these equations. You can write in the metric form with A, you know. But um, this is the, like, uh, what is the current VA is here? Uh, this is a B. And these are the 
talk. We could kind of talk this with you. So, but the VF could be equal to the A, right? So, so. That's it. So that's a steady equation using a matrix form. But uh, if we do uh, assume that uh, it's a permanent magnet, in other words, here, there's a PM, or we don't have this one. Uh, here, this is a constant, okay, constant. So PM, what do we do is simply, um, it has VA, T here, VA is like this. So this is back EMF. Okay, this is back EMF. So in here, this is a damping. This is a inertia. So let's see what do we have. I told you what we care is. Omega so V A in, Omega R out. Okay, Omega R out. So this is a load as a torque, external, and this is KV. It's um, the constant. So we also have KV here as a, this is a BMF. Uh, back EMF. Okay, so here, so, yeah, back EMF, then put it here. So then basically your electromagnetic torque you can provide is proportional to amateur current and this KV, <laughs> KV. And you see KV in two places here, okay? Then you drive this mechanic system. So that's what you have. So this, to me, if you write this is S, this is S, you put this one together, what are you going to get? Okay, I remember <clears throat> here, tau A is small, small than J, okay? So basically you have something like this. <clears throat> you have, um, let's lump everything in, in the top, it's like K, one, you have uh, AS plus, no. You have AS plus one, uh, cascaded with K2, BS plus one. Then you have something KV here, you have feedback in here. So in a close loop setting, you, you can understand that this is like a second order system. Second order, this is the omega. But remember, this is A is so small, okay, that it could be deleted, okay, compared to B is so big. So therefore, therefore in the end, okay, therefore in the end, in the end, okay, in the end. So people say, oh, I have a DC motor system, I do this. This is my V, this is my Omega. So I hope you understand. By writing this way, it's already a approximation. It is not physics anymore. You ignore a lot of details. But only this picture gives you the physics, okay? Everything, yeah, okay? But um, so in the future, I hope you know this. And you know this, both you should know about the DC motor. Because sometimes ignoring this term <clears throat> will give you errors. Errors, okay, give you errors. Uh, of course, you can write in the matrix form. Then if you want to do a transfer function, then you can do, you can second order system, okay? Second order system, okay? Second order system. Okay, second order system. But this is from, <clears throat> from I, okay? 
So tau m is called inertial time constant. Okay. So J is the moment of inertia R A divided by K squared, this one. Okay. <coughs> So it's for inertial time constant, it's due to the external mechanical um, load and uh, all the equivalent uh, moment of inertia, okay? As, uh, as well as your uh, system's KV and uh, amateur's resistance, okay? So that's omega R, okay, written in others, okay? But uh, we need to define, so this is not, uh, <laughs> Is this transfer function? No, it's not yet. So it, is, uh, it is just output, omega R of S, it's a signal, okay? So then you need to define which one is input, which one is output, you get a transfer function, right? So, but anyway, uh, let me summarize. Uh, DC motor, very unique. In, uh, exerts torque on rotating member as a result of the interaction of two stationary orthogonal magnetic systems. So they just cut uh, the orthogonal, okay? Um, one is produced by current flow in the winding, so it's uh, called field, it's called field excitation winding. The other is caused by the current flow in the winding of the rotating member, it's called amateur. Um, but uh, in the permanent magnet DC motor, widely used uh, low power control system, the brushless uh, motor uh, rapidly replacing uh, the permanent magnet of the motor. And so, because uh, the external relationship is very similar, that's why we still call it DC motor, but it's actually the AC motor I told you from the beginning. So next lecture, we are going to go through some of these AC motors to prepare us to understand what is the brushless DC motor, okay? Brushless. I want you to be aware, uh, when we see motors, DC motors, <clears throat> we always think about turning, all right? The rotation of machine. Uh, here we have a rotation of machine, rotating member, okay? Rotating member. But you probably have heard today, people are talking about linear motor. Okay, linear motor. That means your motor is moving in a linear without a rotating member, okay? So, of course, this topic is too advanced. So, it's, it was uh, 20 years ago, it's uh, still a topic of research. Can you make a motor uh, not rotating, but moving linearly, uh, rectilinear, okay? Can we do that? The answer is yes. So I encourage some of you can choose a linear motor as your actuator topic. So our time is almost up, and I'll pause and to see if we have further questions, okay? If not, uh, we are going to cover brushless DC motor. Actually, brushless DC motor is a special type of AC motor. So next module is mainly we cover AC motors. So you have a foundation to understand different types of motors. But we don't have time to talk about linear motor, but um, I hope you'll read something on that. Uh, it was useful because it's more and more used in industry, in products, okay, electronics. Uh, but when I was a uh, undergraduate student, that's 1983, when I was a junior, uh, no, sophomore, 84, 84, okay, 84. Yeah, it's my first time I heard about the linear motor. I was so fascinated. I said, wow, motors can go linear, <laughs> not turning. <laughs> it's hard to imagine. Don't you guys feel uh, surprised? Go and uh, uh, and uh, go and uh, read more about linear motor principles. And uh, but uh, better to read more after next lecture when you have some knowledge about AC motors regarding it can generate rotating or rotating magnetic field. The field is just moving. <laughs> right now, the magnetic field is static. It's not not 
changing. When you give power, the magnetic field is fixed, okay? Next time we're going to say, what if my magnetic field is, 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 uh, is uh, rotating? Can I drag my armature? Drag it to turn as well? Yes, you are creating exactly the easy motor, many of them working in that way. We're going to go through those, okay? Uh, no matter that, okay? So why not we ask all these questions uh, next week and, uh, or during next Tuesday's office hour? By the way, I didn't get enough people in the office hour. So I'm not very happy. I feel lonely. And today you made me uh, feel better. You got 19, 18 students showed up out of 40, less than half. Okay, it's better than last time. And then um, better than last time. So I have uh, 13 students. Okay. Uh, let's just stick on that, and we are almost done. Uh, let's learn more about mechanics. Uh, these are all really fundamental. I explained to you. It will take you 10 times of the time when you go through yourself. Okay. So I use too much of your time and uh, shall we stop here? Any questions? Feel free to uh, open your mic and ask, then we can finish. Will we be discussing the exam next uh, class? No, no, I don't know. Uh, we need to cover AC motor and brushless DC motors. Uh, the good time to talk probably is next Tuesday office hour and uh, next Monday it's also a very important lecture and uh, I think the final exam will put emphasis on the regional week okay okay because a lot of things we we don't want to check too much about your offhand that you already did in the midterm right so but it does not mean I'm not going to uh, have an open question. So. Okay, so let's talk more um, next Tuesday. All right. Thank you. Take care. See you Friday. Thank you. Bye bye.